I had planned to bring out a different video today. I've been working on a response video to an appalling article that appeared on the LSE Gender Studies Department blog, um, but I've had to interrupt that to respond to nasty and defamatory comments made about me by yet another trans activist bully. There seems to be an endless supply of this particular species of pond life, which is fine because as long as they're out there spewing hate, I have got a reason to carry on making videos exposing that hate. Right, here's the background. For those of you who don't know Luton, it's quite a large industrial town about 30 miles north of London. One of London's airports is situated just outside it. By 2009, which was the year in which I wrote a certain blog post on my old blog at skepticat.org, the town had acquired a reputation for radical Islamist recruitment. Islamism, in case anyone isn't aware, is not the name of the religion. That's Islam. Islamism is a political ideology um, whose adherents have, amongst other atrocities, carried out a succession of terrorist attacks in several countries. The worst and the biggest, of course, was in New York in September 2001. There have also been a number in the UK and elsewhere. In 2009, the 2nd Battalion of the Royal Anglian Regiment of the British Army was returning to the UK after a posting in, I think, Iraq, may have been Afghanistan. Luton was to be the location of a homecoming parade held for the uh, returning soldiers, and it attracted a protest by a small local Islamist group called it was very provocative, this protest, and while it was condemned by Muslim community leaders in the town, it attracted a lot of media attention, which in turn generated a lot of anger at authorities for allowing the protest to go ahead in the first place. From that event in March 2009, a new political campaigning group was born. It comprised mostly young, mostly white men. And it positioned itself in opposition to Islamism and to the establishment of Sharia law in the UK. Within a few months, it became formalised as an organisation calling itself the EDL, the English Defence League. In October 2009, at a time when I was deeply involved in humanism, secularism and scepticism, I wrote on my blog a post entitled EDL, UAF, that's um, a group called Unite Against Fascism, What the F. I'm now going to read you a few bits of it and I will link to the post below so you can read the whole of it yourself if you wish to. Anyway, aware that the messages of the newly emerged EDL and the Stop Islamification of Europe group, SAOE, have resonated with at least a few nice, respectable secularist folk, I decided to take a closer look at what they and their opponents are about. Did I not make that clear enough? Having by that time been nearly 20 years immersed in humanism and surrounded by humanists and secularist campaigners, I was keenly aware of how difficult many people were finding it to separate their distaste for religion, their abhorrence for certain awful cultural practices like honour killings and forcing women to cover up from head to toe, and especially the political ideology based on Islam that had led to thousands of civilian deaths, there's been a similar problem when anti-Zionism has tipped over into anti-Semitism. My approach to religious people has always been live and let live as long as you hurt nobody else. When I came across people I thought to be of pretty much the same mind as I am, making sympathetic noises about a rather sketchy sounding group. My natural inclination as an avowed sceptic 
was to investigate the group and to report on my findings objectively. That is exactly what I did in that blog post. Here's some more. As a former card-carrying communist who participated in demonstrations against the National Front in the 1970s, the UAF might seem the natural choice for me. I certainly applaud anyone who stands up to be counted in opposition to the British National Party, who, in spite of their protestations of respectability nowadays, remain inexorably racist, judging by their website. However, a skim through the UAF website flags up a disappointing inability on this group's part to distinguish between the BNP and others who are protesting about radical Islam. Remember, the EDL were just a few months in creation. I found, when I looked at their web forum they'd set up, that it had attracted interest from a range of people. I was surprised to find some of them were former Labour Party members who hated the BNP. Others had supported the BNP. Some of the EDL supporters were black and some were Jewish. Others of them were racist and anti-Semitic. And they were the ones getting banned from the forum. As I say in my blog post, the BNP condemned the EDL and threatened disciplinary action against any member who took part in any of their activities. The leadership of the EDL at that time were equally keen to distance themselves from the BNP and to disavow racism. For their part, the EDL leaders are trying very hard to send out a message that they are not racist. Their members forum, for example, carries this warning. The EDL will not tolerate any racist or Islamophobic behaviour on this forum. We are against innocent Muslims being victimised or abused. And I went on to say that, of course, if you hold up placards in city centres saying no more mosques, this might just be interpreted as victimising innocent Muslims, especially those who don't have a mosque to attend anywhere near them and would quite like one built. Says the EDL national organiser Trevor Kelway, Our message is very clear. Remove Islamic fundamentalists from our streets and remove all practice of Sharia law in England. The EDL welcomes anyone, so they claim, as long as they share their opposition to Islamic fundamentalism. Black and white unite, said one of their placards at their 8th August demo in Birmingham. We hate Nazis as much as we hate Muslim extremists, said another. In this video, a group of masked EDL supporters, including a couple of black guys, are shown burning a Nazi flag. Just what bits of the religious and cultural practices of Muslims might be acceptable to the EDL members is not clear, but I expect the answer is none. For all their protestations, the EDL come across as anti-Muslim, which is bad, as well as anti-Islamism, which is a position I hold myself. Right, so those are a few snippets from a blog post I wrote over a decade ago about a group that had formed a few months earlier before it had achieved the higher profile and rise in membership that was to follow over the next year or two before it went into decline. Nowadays, the EDL is associated with the notorious Tommy Robinson and it brings to mind thuggish, Islamophobic football supporters. I think that image is accurate. That is why nasty transgender activists have tried to connect me with it, because I didn't shy away from reporting my findings. The purpose of the trans cultists has always been to try to justify the assault on me by three young trans identifying thugs. Within days of that assault, somebody called Ada Cable, whom I'd never heard of in my life before, had gone trawling through that old blog to try to find something to use against me. He found that same blog, quoted half a sentence from it, 
and declared that I was literally a Nazi. This is the whole of the sentence he quoted from. While I can understand and to some extent share the anger that draws people to groups like the EDL and the SIOE, I believe their provocative tactics and sloganeering will make them the unwitting recruiting sergeants of militant Islam, and I hope secularists and free thinkers and anyone else who is horrified at atrocities committed by Muslims, blah, 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 will steer well clear and lend their support instead to intelligent progressive initiatives like the One Law for All campaign against Sharia law in Britain and the Council of Ex-Muslims. And here I am with my friend, the heroic Mariam Namazi, leader of the Council of Ex-Muslims and co-founder of the One Law for All campaign. That makes me a literal Nazi, does it, Ada? So what do these tweets say about you? Ever seen anything like this from me or any other gender critics? No, of course not. We are not the violent, hateful bigots in this fight. Cable has not been the only member of the trans Taliban to bring up things I said over a decade ago to try to persuade people I'm some kind of anti-Muslim extremist. The thing is, they have not found anything that I'm not prepared to stand by. There is nothing I have ever written or said anywhere that justifies the allegation that I'm a racist or a fascist or a white supremacist. So in order to try to present me as one, the haters have to resort to lying. More than four years on, they are still doing it. Last weekend, a man who calls himself Ethel Thurston, who has a YouTube channel called Essence of Thought, decided to yet again use that blog post to try to defame me by saying this. Indeed, the hero of Jill Baird's article is a notorious transphobe with a history of trying to whitewash British fascism, Maria McLachlan, or she's known online, Skepticat. In one of McLachlan's fluff pieces designed to improve the public's image of British fascism, McLachlan proclaims in no uncertain terms that, quote, I currently feel able to defend the EDL stated objectives from the charges of racism and fascism, end quote. Whilst acting like the EDL's image problem is simply the result of a few bad apples. That piece is still public, by the way, since McLachlan feels confident enough in the narrative surrounding her, a narrative that people like Jill Baird have helped build, that she doesn't feel the need to hide her support for white nationalism. That's how normalised fascism is in the gender critical movement in general. The sentence he is quoting from is, I am not naive, however, and although I've currently feel able to defend the EDL's stated objectives from the charges of racism and fascism, I'm not suggesting that none of the people who turn up to EDL demonstrations are racist or bigots or BNP voters. I bet loads are. The words current stated objectives here are crucial. The point I made quite strongly in my blog post is that this newly formed group was striving to achieve a veneer of respectability and it was succeeding in attracting support they didn't deserve. And underneath, they were probably just racist idiots. The irony is that prior to becoming what Ethel Thurston dude bro calls a notorious transphobe, I was quite a strong ally to trans-identifying people. That was my position at the time of writing that blog post, and the evidence of my support for trans-identifying people is still online. I'm deeply ashamed of it now because I realise I was a mug. So I'm not going to produce it here, but I do link to some of it from my peak trans story, which is on my website. Now, you may be wondering about this article by Jill Berup that Thurston refers to, of which I am supposedly the hero. I'd forgotten about this, but it was written a couple of weeks after I had been assaulted, and it is entitled, If You Strike Them Down, They Will Become More Powerful Than You Can Possibly Imagine. The article is no longer on Jill's site, so I link to the archive below. 
The next few minutes of Thurston's video are spent lying about what happened to me when I was assaulted. I could not bear to watch it, but I skimmed through the transcript and not for the first time I had to wonder how do these people live with themselves. They are the lowest of the low. In fact, the lowest of the low probably thinks Thurston goes even lower. I don't need to comment on his version of events because I have already done so um, in its original form. There is the long version, which also shows the reaction from the gender cultist uh, to my being punched to the ground by three young men, and the hatred, the celebrations, the exhortations of further violence against women. There is the abridged version that admits the worst of the reactions and concentrates just on what's happened. And there is a very short one this shows just the highlights. I'll link to the playlist below because Thurston doesn't. Bear Up and I are not the only women he lies about in his video. My friends and sisters, Venice Allen, Linda Bellos, Kelly J. Keane, Alison Bailey and Magdalene Burns, RAP, are also targeted by this despicable man. I commented twice below Thurston's video using um, this account here for the first comment and then I did another one in my real name. Neither of them appeared. I suspect that he moderates all comments and censors those that call him out. Every comment that is allowed though is really fawning. Be aware that if you leave comments and you still can see it after several days, it doesn't mean that anyone else can see it maybe that he has hidden you from the channel. So as you may have seen, I issued a statement yesterday saying that his video is telling a pack of lies about me and pointing out that he fails to link to either the blog post um, that he misquotes from or from the videos I made about the assault. And I also invite Thurston to a live streamed exchange where I will ask him to justify what he says about me in the light of the actual evidence. My husband tweeted my statement. I'm also grateful to Graham Linehan for sharing it in one of his newsletters. It turns out that Graham has also been targeted by this monster, as have many others, including transidentifying YouTubers, Rose of Dawn and Blair White and ContraPoints and Buck Angel. So how did he respond to my invitation? We don't debate fascists. Well, of course, nobody is asking him to debate fascists or even one fascist. I'm asking him to justify his defamatory comments about me and to show the evidence for them live in front of a live audience. Of course, he refuses because the evidence doesn't exist. So Thurston needs to stay in hiding while he defames me and others like the coward he is. He also told his followers, in a classic case of projecting, the gender-critical fascists are accusing me of refusing to link to the article's videos re referenced since I apparently know I'm lying. Only problem is I do link them. In fact, I've gone out of my way to mirror them. Another lie. Link means you link directly below your video where people can see it and click on it instantly and see your original source. What Thurston has got is a link to a Google Doc containing within it his entire script. It's about 34 pages long and buried deep within it, there are no anchor tags to get there quickly, you have to scroll down to page 21, I think, to see that he has copied and pasted the URL of the blog post, but it's not a clickable link. You have to be really determined to find that blog post. If what he said about it was true, why wouldn't he provide a visible direct link as proof as he does to his own social media? Nor, of course, does he link to any of my videos. He is doing exactly what Joss Pryor did, which was instead of directing people to original sources so they can see for themselves what happened, he is carefully selecting bits and lying about them. And because his audience is so stupid and he is saying what they want to hear, 
they believe and they repeat them. They don't give a flying toss about what might happen to their victims. But I'm terrified. I get recognised sometimes when I'm out in public. People call out my name and if I hear, unless I'm at a feminist gathering or something, if I hear a strange man call out my name, my instinctive reaction is to freeze and get a bit of a panic attack. Um, and I wonder if the person who has recognised me is an enemy, someone who thinks I'm a fascist or anything else that I have been totally opposed to my entire life and whether they are out to gain woke points by approaching me, abusing me, or inflicting further violence. That said, I'm not interested in suing the basket. Much as I appreciate the very kind offers of donations, he's not important enough. I can do without the stress that a lawsuit would involve, and I don't think I'd get any satisfaction from winning. Do we really want to silence people like this when they are so easy to expose as hateful liars, typical of their cult? For those who troll this channel telling me to respect these vile misogynists, to be nice to them, to find a different hobby, not a chance as long as they continue lying, defaming and stirring up hate against us. I will fight you until my dying breath. That's all.